Do you fellas still think they're a playoff team despite this win that took all of the 60 minutes to get? I, I do. I absolutely do. They're, they're going to be on the back end of that, though, right? They're going to be that seventh, eighth, ninth, fighting to get to the seventh type situation. And in the end, they're still a playoff team to me. Here, look, go back a week ago. Cam Newton played fine, fumbles in the end. Instead of having the ball in his left arm, he's got it in his right. Uh, uh, instead of having it away from the traffic, he has it against the traffic. They punch it out. He fumbles. Played fine enough to win the football game. Had him in a position to win the game. You fast forward to last night. You look at it. You go, it's the Jets. How could that be? Ah. Every now and then, 16 games is a long season. You're going to have a stinker, two, three, maybe even four. Every single team in the National Football League, you can go around and look at close games and clunkers. I mentioned the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Dallas Cowboys. Pittsburgh Steelers are undefeated. That almost got taken away from them against the Dallas Cowboys. But it didn't. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers lost to the Chicago Bears. Do you really honestly think that the Chicago Bears, Jay Will, are better than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Not even close. So you're going to have those type of situations where they're going to be tough games. Now, they've dug themselves in a deep hole. They've got to continue to keep playing better to climb themselves out of it. I really disagree. I don't think the Patriots are going to make the Super Bowl, uh, make excuse me, make the playoffs at all. Oh, you got them going to the Super Bowl. No, That's the conference. I, they're not going to make. They're not going to make the playoffs. And uh, look, I understand a win is a win, but how you win is important. Did anybody? Did, didn't we expect the Patriots to beat the Jets last night? The Jets are the worst team in football. Didn't we expect Cam Newton to come out and be somewhat decent to beat this Jets team? Now, if you want to talk about how they beat them, that's a different conversation than just the fact that they beat them. Look, they they dominated time of possession last night. All right? Their, their defense, the Jets defense was on the field for pretty much all the second half. In the second half, how about this, Zubin? In the second half, offensively, the Jets only saw four plays. Offensively. Four plays in the second half. I mean, that that's... In the fourth, I think. Um, that's problematic. That's problematic. So you wear a defense down, and yes, you beat them by a field goal at the end, but how you beat a Jets team is pretty important, isn't I'm it, I'm encouraged watching – I almost said Tom Brady. I'm encouraged watching Cam Newton have a Brady-like performance, 27-35, to 200-and-some-odd yards, finding a, finding a guy like Jacoby Myers, much like a Julian Edelman, a, a, someone to lean on that – you have confidence in that you're going to throw the football to. He rushed for two touchdowns. He didn't get one in the air. That's okay. That's okay. Brady wouldn't have the rushing touchdown. Brady would have him in air. But that's fine. At some point throughout the game, I believe Cam Newton was 11-11 or 10-11. of 11. And, 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 you know, methodically doing, taking what they gave him, didn't force anything. I'm encouraged by that. Uh, since coming back from COVID, he seems like he's getting a little bit better. A little bit better, a little bit better. And I go back to the New England Patriot Buffalo Bill game yesterday or last week. It looked like Cam Newton had gotten better, even though they lost the football game. And then he picks up where he kind of left off from the Bills against the Jets last night. And again, I'll say it again. You're going to have some stinkers and some close games against teams that you may play down in their competition. It happens all the time in the National Football League. On the other side, the worst team in football is off to its worst start ever. That's saying something. That's quite a double whammy there. The Jets are 0-9 for the first time. They didn't play with Sam Darnold's shoulder injury, didn't have Quinn and Williams' hamstring injury. The one bright spot the entire season has been their mammoth tackle, Makai Becton, who's been playing great football, left the game last night with a chest injury. Adam Gase was a little bit more sullen. Normally, it comes out really ornery in these post-game press conferences. Well, the end is near. Can't say a whole lot. <laughs> Gotcha. He did say we're doing everything we can. We're playing our ass off. It's just not enough. It was a little more positive if there's anything positive to take from being 0-9. He usually comes in there a house of fire and it gets really confrontational with the media. I didn't see that much of it last night when I was watching, but where do the Jets stand now? They are at a point they have never been in the history of the franchise. I was on a 1-15 in team. That coach got fired. Uh, that's all I can say. I was on a 1-15 in team. The coach got fired after two years. And so when you look at it, I would think that Joe Douglas and Mr. Johnson, Christopher Johnson, who took over for his brother Woody to run the organization, have some thinking to do. And it shouldn't be long. It shouldn't be long. I thought he was part of the solution, though, not the problem, when referring to Adam Gase. So th this is like I, what I said about when sometimes when 
executives get up to a podium and they say certain things, yeah, you, you take it for face value, but we all know what's coming with Adam Gase. We, we, everybody feels it every time we watch a game and you can't win these games, don't you, Key? Well, yeah, I, when you 0-16 or 1-15, man, that's hard to sell. Yeah, okay, so if, if I go 1-15 and and I'm in my first year as a first-time head coach and my team is decimated week in and week out and I'm losing players or we're losing games by a field goal or we're losing games by a touchdown or whatever the case may be and we're competitive – then I can carry that over because I can sell that to my fan base. But when I've already got a coach who's been fired from Miami, who's brought here in my quarterback that we drafted the third pick it three years ago is regressing and not progressing, then I got to look at that and say to myself, I can't hold on to this. And I, that's okay. And that's okay for them to wait to the end of the year to make a decision on what they're going to do. That's fine. I don't, I mean, that's fine. I don't care if they fire him now or at the end of the season. Or, I don't even want to call it fire. Parting, parting ways with their coach at the end of the year right now. It doesn't. The Jets aren't going anywhere, so it doesn't really matter. Well, that's why I go back to what we were talking about last week when Joe Douglas was talking about, hey, our quarterback, Sam Darnold, he's our future. You know, as it relates to Adam Gase. Hey, look, he's part of the solution, not part of the problem. I hear all your, I hear everything you're saying, Joe Douglas. I understand this is you and a Mr. Johnson issue that you're going to work on collaboratively. But in the day, you're sitting up here telling me something right now. This, uh, this, all this will change. It could change in time. And like, like I said before, Trevor Lawrence and company, if they find a way to win a national championship, and people are talking about him being a generational quarterback, and this team goes 0 and 16, we will be hearing different words from Joe Douglas's mouth in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.